Congratulations on finishing your year 12 exams. I hope they went well. If you're aiming for medicine, then you will have completed your UCAT earlier in the year. Now you have finished your year 12 exams and you've also completed your whole high school journey as well. It's good to have a little break and to just celebrate the completion of so many years of schooling. But at the same time, if you're like me, you also feel that little cloud of medicine interviews hanging over your head. So today I'm hoping to help you out with that by giving you a really concrete approach to take so that you'll be well prepared for these interviews. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Darren. I just completed my second year of medicine at Monash University, and next year I'll be heading into hospitals for my clinical time. Just a little update on what has been going on with me. I recently had my end of year two exams. I had three written exams. Two of them covered semester two of year two. One of them covered year one and year two content. And I also had two OSCE exams. So what OSCEs are, are that I have a simulated patient and an examiner and I examine the simulated patient and ask them certain questions based on what they present with. That was a little intimidating because these were the first in-person OSCEs that I've had. Plus I had to memorize a lot for that OSCE, learn a lot of what I had to look for in a patient. And also it's very different practicing with your friends and family compared with a stranger. But it was a really enriching experience. I had to I had to brush up on a lot of my skills for those OSCEs and I think it prepared me well for next year where I'll be using their skills a lot on real people. So with today's video, it is the first of a couple I'll be preparing for med interviews for the MMI and for Monash Uni, which is the only uni I applied to for medicine. Today's video will be giving you a really concrete approach for the interviews. It's really a zero to, I don't want to say hero, it's a bit cringe, from zero to being prepared for the interview. So if you've literally done zero interview prep, this video will work fine for you. Just start at step one because that's how the steps work. And following videos will be focused on more on specific content, so how you can structure your answer, how to come up with good answers, and also body language, which is really important. And also I'll be going through some really common questions and giving you guys sample answers and just how to answer those questions as well. As with my experience with interview prep, so I'm studying medicine at Monash Uni, so I had to sit an interview in 2020. So I graduated in 2020, and I entered my first year of medicine in 2021. Me personally, in the interview, I felt good. So from my perspective, I did well. I was confident, I answered to time, and I was able to answer all the questions. But the examiners also gave me a good response as well. So at the end of a scenario, the examiner may ask you if you have anything else to add to your answer. And my examiner asked me that, but after they asked me that, they also said that you don't need to add anything. Like just, just sit back, it's okay. You don't need to add anything else, which I think is a good indicator of how I did. Anyway, enjoy and let's dive into the video. As I mentioned before, today's video will be focused on giving you a really strong approach for medicine interviews. So there are four steps to this approach. And as I said, if you've done zero prep at all, start with step one. If you've done some prep, then start wherever, slot yourself in wherever is appropriate. And you can just adopt parts of this approach as well into your preparation. Following videos will be focused on content and body language. And if you want to get a bit of a head start for body language, then I have a video out on how to deliver a speech for public speaking. And those skills of eye contact, mannerisms, posture, I, I said eye contact already, but all translate exactly into giving a confident and successful interview response. So if you want some insight into good body language, then please check out that video. So today is focused on the approach, four steps, and let's jump into step one. Step one is practice scenarios. And you can get these from just online. I'll try and find some links if I can, and also companies as well, if you're interested in those. And what's important with these practice scenarios is just to dive in. So this is for someone who's literally at zero interview prep. I advise you just to try some scenarios. Okay, and timings is not that important. So I think the timings for Monash Uni are two minutes reading, eight minutes answering for one station. But that's not really important. What's important is that you just read the scenario from, I guess, someone who doesn't have much of an insight into med interviews, just from your perspective from your own personal experiences, read it, analyze it, and then try answering the questions. 
You don't need to follow timings, as I mentioned, but do try and answer them properly. So pretend you're in the actual interview, give it your best shot, try and structure it well, give it your honest answer as well. And the other thing that can really help with practice scenarios is finding ones that have sample answers. I remember the first couple I did had sample answers and I gave the questions my best shot. And then when I read the sample answers, I was really enlightened as to you know much better structure and just the just like an ideal, a really good response of what interviewers are looking for. So ones with sample answers are particularly useful here. Okay, so once you've done your practice scenarios and the purpose of these is to really just dip your feet in, just to acquaint yourself with medicine interviews and just to see what it's all about, the next step is to evaluate your performance. Evaluate your performance and brainstorm ways to improve. Okay, so when evaluating, you wanna really identify your weaknesses and writing them down is a really good way of doing so. Identify your weaknesses. Step two is really obvious after step one. If you've done zero interview prep and you try to answer some interview questions, some of your errors and what you feel not confident in will really stand out to you. And I'll just give you some common ones just so you can, I guess be aware of these, but it's really important that you just, just try step one, just try some scenarios. But common mistakes include lack of structure. Okay, so maybe you just had no clue how to answer. You had so many things to say, but you just didn't know what order to say them in. Or maybe you gave your answer, you thought of some other things to add, and then you sort of just shoved it at the end and you feel like your answer didn't end well. And the very, very common problem with answering is that people, the end of people's answers is really bad. It's a really common problem. You'll see as you practice more. But lack of structure is a common issue. Next, we have um, not talking for long enough. It's more usual for people to not talk for long enough for if you've just started out in interviews. And yeah, so you need to make the time. You want to make the most of the time. And there are usually there is usually enough to talk about. So um, if you're not talking for long enough, it's usually a problem on you and your thinking and your assessment of the scenario. Next, stuttering. Not everyone's a public speaker, not everyone's a debater. If you're just a normal student who went through high school, it's likely you don't have much speaking experience and it's really likely that you'll stutter, you use a lot of a lot of ah, uh, um phrases and you might just feel a bit more nervous as well, especially in front of an actual interviewer. And that's a common issue. And finally, not knowing how to answer a question. So this comes in two forms. One, there might be a question you literally don't know how to answer. So it's really weird, or perhaps it's about an issue like rural health, Aboriginal health, or like transplants that you, don't, you just have no idea about. So you're like, okay. But it also may be that you need to learn how to answer a question that you don't know. So you may receive a question you have no clue about in the actual interview. How do you answer that? That's how do you answer that while leaving a good impression on the examiner? That's really important to know. And finally, no, actually, no, that's it. Okay, once you've evaluated those, brainstorm ways to improve. Okay, I'll go through these more specifically in my following videos, but lack of structure, um, stuttering, how can you improve those aspects? And what I really recommend is that you try and improve one at a time. First off, don't rush. You have a lot of time. You can spend a whole day practicing med interviews. Don't, but like, it's not like, it's not like going to the gym where you sort of wear yourself out after a while. You can continually improve yourself for quite a long time for interviews. So don't stress and just make sure you're improving one thing concretely at a time. So first work on lack of structure, then maybe do some research into questions you don't know. And then on another day, try and work on your fluency as well. So try and improve one at a time and evaluate those weaknesses and work systematically through them. What will help you with this entire process is step three. And what is step three? Step three is to record yourself. A really hard thing to do, honestly. People can't bear to watch themselves, but if you want to do well in interviews, if you want to excel in interviews, it's a really useful thing to do. So just record yourself. Don't use front camera, so back camera up is better. Oh, I changed the color, I think. 
because then you'll you'll sort of be looking at yourself. Um, you can use Zoom as well. Zoom if you like. If your interviews are on Zoom, it's a useful way. Okay, and then watch it a couple of times. You can watch it generally. So watch generally. So just have a look at the whole video. Observe anything you like. I think it's just good to watch it once through. Get those you know cringe nerves. Oh, I'm looking at myself out of the way. But then also watch for your body language. Body language is so crucial in interviews, especially in person ones, but also Zoom as well. Think about if you're speaking to this person, if you're the interviewer, or if you're just seeing this person in real life, does this person come off as confident? Does it seem like they're passionate about medicine? Would you want this person at your uni? And also watch for content, of course. You can give it to your like parents or, or siblings or friends to watch as well for the content one. Um, the reason you can watch for content is you can see if what you said you know flows well and all that, but also if it's structured well. Because you know what you're saying, if you listen to it again, you might think it makes sense. But if you show it to a friend, they might be like, it's really hard to follow what you're saying. So it's good to show it to other people if you'd like. Once again, similar to step two, identify your weaknesses, evaluate them, record yourself, try and fix them. Evaluate your weaknesses by watching the video, record them, fix them. If you play sport, it's sort of like watching footage of yourself shooting a basketball or like you know, kicking a footy or something as well. Watching, correcting, recording, recording, watching, correcting, and then recording yourself again and repeating that whole process. Really, really useful to making concrete improvements and you'll really see your body language improve as well if you're doing it correctly. All right, so it might seem pretty complete, steps one, two, and three. But step four is to practice with others especially med students and doctors. I practiced a lot with my friends. I think I did one med entry mock workshop. I don't think I practiced too much with um, people with like, with med students and doctors, but in hindsight, that is something which is really, really useful. Why is it useful? So practicing with yourself is, is great. And you can identify a lot of the common mistakes. So in conversation and sort of normal people mistakes. And if you practice with um, people who are not in med as well. It's sort of like normal people mistakes. This person's avoiding eye contact. So, um, but practicing with med students and doctors sort of gives you a gives you a medical perspective. Because these people are in the profession. These people, especially for medical students, sat the interview a couple of years ago or even you know last year. And so they have a really good idea as to what interviews are looking for and as to how to do well. Someone said a really nice phrase once, but if you just practice with people who are like you and gunning for medicine, you might be with very intelligent people, but in the end, it's just the blind leading the blind because you guys both aren't adjudicators for medicine. You don't really know what they're looking for. And so you're just giving each other the best tips you can. So you really need a medical perspective, both for content, I guess, and, and structure and body language as well. And yeah, doctors particularly can might even give you some some particular info on certain issues and um, sort of give you the newest information on that that you can speak about in your interviews. So yeah, practice with others, especially med students and doctors. Was there anything else I wanted to mention there? Nope. Okay. So that's it with today's video then. I'll just go through the four steps, just a quick summary. So step one, try practice scenarios. Okay, this is for someone, well, let's use a different color actually. Let's use red, purple, let's go purple. So if you've literally at zero prep, try some practice scenarios, see how you go with them. Next, evaluate and brainstorm. So evaluate how you did, brainstorm ways to improve. Step three, record yourself. And you can do this with conjunction with step two just by repeating the two together. They work really well together. And finally, if you've sort of worked on a lot of the lay people, I don't like that word actually, a lot of the sort of normal mistakes, eye contact or that, but you want a sort of med interview edge, then practice with medical professionals. Practice, practice with people involved in medicine. and receive feedback from them and take that on board. 
I think if you follow those steps, you'll be very, very well set for the interview. So that's it for today's video. I hope you've um, gathered a really concrete plan of attack for the interview. I hope this has helped you out. Um, good luck for your interview prep. Drop any questions you have in the comments below and any video ideas that you have, any sort of med interview help that you need. Um, but otherwise, good luck with your prep and I look forward to seeing you all next time.